Okay, so tonight's demo, I am going to be sharing with you how to create a knobby sea star. Did you know there's a couple of different types of sea stars that have knobby um, features, I guess, lack of a better word. So this is the skeleton of a knobby sea star. And see all those little knobs that come up here, these round pieces right here. And, and then along the arms, there's more knobs. They look like teeth, don't they? So there's a couple of different kinds. There is one called a red knobby sea star. And I put the pictures on my ad for tonight's live. And then there's another one called a um, chocolate chip knobby sea star. And it has brown tips on it. So it's like a light tan. Um, the skin on the outside is light tan. And then these pieces here are all dark, dark brown. They look like chocolate chips. So it looks kind of like a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> but don't eat it. <laughs> so, okay, let's get overhead and we will get started with this demonstration. So I'm just going to show you again real quick what this looks like, right? So it's got these bumps or knobs on here. Okay. And they come in lots of different sizes. I picked this one up at a, a shop in Tarpon Springs, but I want to share with you guys real quick how to create this sea star using my stencil so as i was mentioning this stencil is called my sea or my stars and shells stencil and it has lots of different shapes on here it's got a scallop and a regular shaped uh, sea star or starfish um, and we got a spiny conch shell and a regular conch shell and a sea urchin and then we have a spiny sea star right they have those long skinny arms on them and then this is an oyster shell, and then this is a nautilus here. And then we have our spiny sea star. So let's get going. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this stencil to create this look very quickly. And I'm using these wonderful new stencil brushes that we've uh, been selling. So hopefully you have yours. If you don't, you can get them at onestroke.com. They come in three sizes. These, this, the 12 and the 16 is what I'm going to be using tonight. And then I'm going to also be using um, a number six flat to do some of the details and a 12 flat to do some of the shading. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put out, uh, first of all, my base colors. All right. So I'm going to do two different, I was telling you, there's the chocolate chip sea star and there's one called a red point or a red tipped sea star. So the red one has a blue color to its body and then the red on top. So I'm using a medium blue here. And then I have some coffee latte that I'm using for um, the chocolate chip one. Okay. And then I'm going to put out some other colors that I'll be using. So we've got some um, Pueblo for the kind of accent color on the bottom edge of that sea star. That's the chocolate chip one. Okay. And then I'm using for the reds on here, we need a deep red. So I've got some berry wine. All right. So I've got some berry wine out and then I'm going to put some, um, apple red as well for my red accent colors. Okay. And then I have some wicker white that I'm going to be using because some of these get worn away and you start to see some of the skeletal pieces of it underneath that are kind of white or maybe they haven't completely grown over. I'm not sure which it is, but those are the colors we're using. Okay. All right. So I'm going to first work with my large stencil brush or medium size. In this case, this is a number 16 stencil brush. Okay. And these are wonderful because they're synthetic and they have a very nice finished flat surface instead of oddly bumpy. Um, this is what a regular stencil brush might look like, right? Where we've got a lot of loose hairs and they're flat, but they're very um, spread apart and not very, they're very coarse. Okay. So this is more of a stiff and thin compact set of, of hairs on this synthetic brush. Okay. All right. So first of all, we make sure when you're doing stenciling, I'm going to get out one piece of paper towel that I'm going to set right here so you can see, and I'm going to move this guy out of the way. Oops. I don't want to break him. 
Okay, so you want to have some paper towel um, set out so that you can tap off any excess paint as you're loading for these stencils, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get some coffee latte. You don't use much paint with these, at least at the start, of course. Um, so I'm loading coffee latte onto the end of this brush and then I'm going to tap it off so that there's not a lot of excess paint on it, okay? And then what I want to do is, let's come right up here to the top here, is I'm going to go around the outside edge and you make circles. So let's come down now. There we go. I want you to see everything. Oh no, <laughs> don't move the stencil once you start. There we go, put it back. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna make circles, tight circles, round one way, then the other, right? So counterclockwise, clockwise, going around. So I'm gonna go around the outside edge of this all the way around. I'm not worrying about this inside so much. I'll go over it, but it's more background at this point. And then when we do um, the darker color, oh, I need my darker color. I need some burnt umber. I didn't grab it. I'll have to do that. Picked up extra paint, and then I'm going to come back here and continue applying the stencil. Oops, I think I might have gotten too much, but that's all right. So I'm just getting the shape with this first application. Okay. And I'm just going to move this away so you can see. If you did it just like that, it actually looks very good. So it depends on what your background color might be. In this case, it's white. And so I want to have my accent colors um, in, the, in the case of where the, the stars or the round, the dots go um, to be a darker brown and then I also want to use my Pueblo to do some shading around the outside edge and this is going to help me so this is going to give me my structure and then I'm going to put out some this is real brown burnt umber either one of those is fine we just want a darker brown for that now before I go and put that in I'm going to just lay this stencil brush down and I'm going to come and get my 12 flat which I just got damp and I'm going to load with this coffee latte some more. Coffee latte, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to see the bump structure underneath while still filling in. So you don't want a, a lot of load. Actually, some medium on this would probably help, but this is working just fine with my damp brush. And I'm going to go all the way around, filling in the gaps, all right, there we go, through there, and along here, and out there. So you, you're looking at it at a little bit of a sideways angle, so it lets you see how these bumps are raised a little bit. All right, there we go, and just finish with this arm right here. Okay, so see, I put a thin coat of this coffee latte over the structure of my star, but I can still see where the, the bumps go um, and where the, the structure of the, the entire shape is still. Okay, so with that, then I'm going to, let me just clean this up a little bit. I'm then going to take my brush and I'm going to side stroke I've got the coffee latte on there and I, you know, I want some medium because I'm on paper and that water in my brush is going to give out on me. I can feel it. So I want to take medium on my brush and then come load side stroke some of this Pueblo. Okay. And you can make your sea stars any color you want to. 
Um, they look really pretty in like aquas and greens and pinks too. So if you wanted to do it more uh, vibrant colors, they're pretty that way. Not natural, but pretty. All right, so I'm going to come along the bottom edge of this arm and I'm pushing on the flat of the brush and that's shading that orange color. So if you go back and look at the picture that I posted for this demo cover, um, the actual Sea Star itself has kind of an orange tone to the underside of it. Okay, so I'm going to come to that point and I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to come right in here and lay the brush on the flat again and come around this edge and then lift. Right, so wherever you would see that underside, so I would not see that underside looking at it from this angle on this side of this leg, but I would see it on the underside of this leg. So I'm going to come right up here and stroke there. Okay, and then up here and stroke up there. Right, and I would not see it on the back side of that. So if you think about that, it makes sense given your angle, and then you just stand it up right there. So now I've got a nice perspective going for this because I can see where that underside would show and where it wouldn't. Okay, looks like a spaceship. Kind of. I suppose it does, yes. <laughs> All right, so now we have that going. And so what we want to do with this one is add the chocolate chips or the brown tips on the spine part of the center's uh, legs and around the center. Okay, so I'm going to come back to my stencil. All right, and you want to make sure this is dry. It's pretty dry. Um, I'm going to line everything back up, right, just like that. And I'm going to come and get my, I want to get my smaller stencil brush now. Okay, so that's, this is the 12, right? And I'm going to get the real brown, whatever dark brown you might have. Okay, and tap that off on the paper towel. Hold your stencil down nice and firm, right in place. There we go. And so right here where these center dots are, that's where those dark points would be. I need a little more. Okay, and so this needs to be pushed down. So you make your circles round one way, then the other, going around that center. All right. And then come out like there'd be a bump right here. And then you come down here come out that way. You might have some along here, All right? So going along that, that center spine here. And we'll see how this works with this. And I think I'm going to have to come in with my six and do some detail strokes on there, right? But at least I'm getting my structure. So there'd be one right there. And there would be one, oops, we're shifting. Right, right there. And right here. And along here. Okay. right up there at the end, right there. Okay, so now when I lift this and I can see if I like it and if I want to come back and I think I want to continue to add more of the structure, right? So along here and then lift this up. There we go. Okay, so now you're seeing, I probably shifted a little bit. Now you're seeing where those bumps go. And I can come in with my flat brush and get rid of any of these. Like I've got a few oopses here. I shouldn't have picked my stencil up. We'll do better with the next one. But there we go. 
but now you can see where everything goes and you can come in with yeah I'm gonna get those out of there cuz that was not what I supposed to do but the nice thing with this multi-surface paint you can always clean it right back out again There we go. Okay, so now you can kind of see what I was talking about where you can get those dark bumps. Then you can come in with the handle of your brush. I'm going to use my smaller brush. This is a six flat. I'm going to get my handle right here, dip it into my dark brown, all right? And I'm going to come right in here and we're going to dot right there. And we're going to dot right there, right there. All right, so you're getting this kind of risen peak to these areas. There we go, right there, right there, so there, right there, okay. I'm going to make that one a little bigger and that one a little bigger out here at that end, there, there. So we're looking at it from the side. So one's going to go right in there, right in there, right in there, 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 right in that center there, right there. Okay, so you can get a feel for how this is laying out. There we go. All right, so once you've got those in place, now it's looking more like what the picture was. And then I can come in with my six flat and I can pull down on some of these sides on the side that's facing me. Let me come up here so you can see. Oops, right there. So I could pull down on the side that's facing me a little bit and create that kind of cone shape that spreads out. See there? Like that. It raises it up. And then to finish that off, we can come in with a little bit of white. I'm grabbing white on my six flat and get enough so that it flattens the brush out. And you can hit a little white, need a little more, right on the tips of some of these dots. It's got to be fresh white or it won't stick, okay? And that's giving it just a little bit more dimension. You don't want to do it on every single one of them, but just a few just to raise those up. Okay. So that's our chocolate chip sea star. And it's kind of fun. So you can have fun with that and you could do a lot more with the detail too. All right. Now I'm going to take these two stencil brushes and I'm going to wipe off the paint on paper towel. Get as much of that paint off of there as you can. And we're going to come back to our stencil here. And I'm going to flip this over so that I don't get myself. Let's do it. No, never mind. We'll do it this way. All right, so we'll just turn our paper. I just didn't want to get into my wet paint right there, and I did it anyway, so that's okay. There we go. All right, so what I want to do with this one is it's got a blue background with red um, details, okay? So I'm going to do my very best to hold this still. If I was smart, I would use painter's tape. So I'm loading the medium blue. Let's turn this around so that you can see the blue, all right? And I'm just real quick going to show you it's the same sort of process, but this one's got this pretty blue background. So we're going to go all the way around. You're making circles in both directions 
left and right. So it's one way, then the other, one way, then the other, filling in. And stenciling on paper is nice because it usually doesn't move underneath the um, stencil edge and bleed under quite so much unless you've accidentally gotten yours wet for some reason. Okay. Bring you a chocolate chip cookie now. Ha ha. <laughs> I just don't feel like that made me hungry for a chocolate chip cookie, but you know. Okay, so at this point then, instead of lifting this and doing the shading, we're going to come in first with our dark and light reds, okay? So I want to move this out of the way because I can't get over that far. There we go. All right, so I'm using my smaller brush now. And I'm going to pick up the berry wine first. All right, so I'm loading the small stencil with the berry wine and we're going to come in. Oh, you know what? No, I don't want to do that yet because we want to come in and wash over with the oops, with the blue to get the rest of the structure. I wasn't thinking. Okay. So let me get my 12. We're going to get the medium blue and the 12 flat, a little bit of medium, and we're going to just like we did with the other one, wipe, stroke over the structure of the whole stencil. So there we go. So now you're seeing a little of that blue, that vibrant blue under there. And then we're going to come in with our red. And that'll go over the original blue area, which should be dry. So you could have done red first instead of the blue, but there's parts of it that I want to leave that blue shade and not have it completely turn red. So I want the blue body of this star to be um, blue. Okay. So now we can place the stencil back over. I know you've seen this already, but I just want you to see how this looks. There we go. I'm excited to see how it looks too, because I'm hoping it kind of turns out. <laughs> okay. So with the red now. Right, we can come in and put in this dark red. So the question is, would it be easier to cut the stencils apart so that you can use painter's tape to hold it more securely? You could do that. I don't care to do that because I store my stencils in a scrapbook book and it's 12 by 12. And so that helps me to keep them all together. But that's a good, good idea. Okay. So we're using this berry wine first. This is the dark red and I'm forgetting to tap off. So hopefully I'm not making too much of a mess. Going down the spines, but I'm staying away from the edges and I'll show you why here in a minute. And I mean the outside edges. Okay. So we're going down that spine out to that tip. I'm going to go out to this tip here. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off real good. And I'm going to come get apple red. 
All right, so this is a brighter red. And in some spots, I'm going to hopefully tap this on and it will stay, yeah, bright red. So I'm tapping this bright red on here and there. Okay. And if you look at that picture, again, there's some brighter red bumps. There we go. All right, now when I lift this, see that pretty red against that blue? All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to take my six flat and I'm going to come and get my apple red. I hope I got all the water out of that. Okay, so with this, then I can come through and do a little more detail. And actually, I think it would make more sense if I use a script liner because I can get some interesting shape lines. Sorry, so I'm going to switch to my script liner and get apple red on that, okay? Tell us more about the scrapbook stencil storage, please. So I use 12 by 12 scrapbook books and the, the clear plastic cover pages to store my 12 by 12 stencils in. That's all. That's what I do. But um, all right. So if you look at that picture, there's like a dot in the middle and then it pulls from all four of those. And then let me come up here so you can see a little better. I don't want to put, didn't want to pull my, well, I can't pull my camera down because we're not looking at the brush load anymore. So you can come in and do, let me get a little stronger in that. I got a hair stray. So you can come in and do along these lines right here. All right. So you kind of outline and then they have these little points that come out along those. So you can come through here and outline it a little bit. You can even do your own little dots right there, right? And give it a little height. Add a little berry wine in there. Okay. So come through here. Pull that out, wipe off. I'm going to come get, I had berry wine in there. I'm going to come back to the apple red. So this is what's neat is you got this light and dark red on here and it's really vibrant against the blue. So you just kind of sputter that and then you can come out here and do, or you dip into a handle would be better. Just dip a dot in there. Right, and just get creative between the red, come out there, and they have these spines that come out all along those that the other one did not have. It has them, but you don't see them because they're all part of the same color, whereas this one, it was very vibrant red. And it all comes back up to the center, right? So it goes out like that, comes down, goes out to the point here, pulls out along and up. And pick up some of the, oops, pick up some of that berry wine. and strengthen some of those spots, okay? So you can have fun with this and just go in and amongst, pull the spines out in between the blue areas. All right, so as I was saying, for my classes coming up in March, we're gonna be doing some of these things on these demos are really gonna help you to understand, especially if you wanna take those classes, so. 
So they just, it just got, it's just like a little web of little bits of red, okay? And then this all connects here and here, there, there, and then it goes out and then down. So go check that out and see if you like it. And this stencil will really help you to get this look quickly without having to create all those little dots and marks, etc., etc. So there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this demo and I hope you um, got some good tips out of this and how to work with stencils and how to use my um, Sea Star stencils, the Stars and Shells stencil to create all these different shapes. Okay, so there we go. This is our Navi Star. Oh, you know what I can do real quick? I can get a little bit of brown. So if I take medium, this is how you would shade with a similar color and get some of this real brown and then our blue and you blend the two colors together in a side load. Okay, so bluish, it's a dark, makes a darker medium blue. All right, and if this was dry, which it's not, but I'm gonna just show you on this little spot right here, you can come through with that color and shade along that edge and it will give that little darker sp space right through like I was showing you before where you'd see some and not all of the shading. Right, that adds a little more depth in there too. But you would wanna wait for this to dry before you did that. And I've got a lot of wet paint in here so I don't wanna make a lot of mess but I can do it without. <laughs> there we go. All right, so now see how that lifted that up just a little bit. And another thing you can do before I go is you can come on the opposite side and you can shade right up next to with brown. And this does a couple of things. It lifts it up a little bit and it helps to find the edges a little stronger too. So you can go in and out where those little bumps are and around, okay? With the flat of the brush. See that kind of lifts it up. There we go. So those are our two knobby sea stars, our chocolate chip and our spiny red knobby stars. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this demo. I hope you learned a lot.